Awesome. It's great to have that affirmation. <laughs> I love Zoom. Okay, so we will proceed with our webinar Leaf Pack Through the Ages. So welcome, everyone. We hope to keep to an hour here, but we've got a lot of amazing experts. Some are new with a year under their belt, some with more than that um, of Leaf Pack. And we've collated um, these group of uh, teachers and partners for a reason to help you understand more of like how to expand your leaf pack or how to get started. Um, this is where we get the wisdom from are all the folks that have joined us tonight. And we're going to be talking about, you know, leaf pack physically monitoring in person with students to some even like virtual components and things that we were doing just to make it interesting and engaging still during the times of the pandemic. So let's get started. A few quick announcements, though, to share with you about LeafPack. Um, we did launch a whole new entire kit earlier this year, and it is um, distributed by the Lamont Company, and it's got a new dichotomous key. We actually have a new biotic index score. We have a new database, um, and we also have new sorting sheets, and all of those are color-coded to sensitivity groups, so you can find more about that on the Leaf Pack Network website. There's a whole new manual. There's also a new water quality app that matches the biotic index scoring system. It's called Water Quality. It's very um, hard to find that one. <laughs> no. It's a very uh, simple name, Water Quality, so you can find that. And everything's bilingual in Spanish too. So if you need that, all the data sheets, the sorting sheets, um, you name it, we tried to make it a little bit more accessible for communities, um, Hispanic communities. We also have two new free tools to share. So if you hopped on to or are a part of a, um, our Leaf Pack e-news letter that goes out a few times a year, if not, sign up for that on our website. Um, but we just announced these two new tools, and one of which is associated with the macroinvertebrates.org website that we, as the Stroudwater Research Center, have been a part of that National Science Foundation project. But this is one of our last tools that we've pushed out from that project and it's called Pocket Macros. So it's amazing. It has these beautiful 3D Gigapan images. It's a free app available on Android and Apple devices. And it's a really great addition to any of your teaching um, experiences and activities. And it's got flashcards and a key and it goes to family level. And this is all, of course, Eastern North America, which is what this grant focused on. We didn't have um, any money to do the whole US or expand North America. But if you're just going to the levels of Leaf Pack, this is a great site for that. So um, check out macroinvertebrates.org and then our new app Pocket Macros. And if you're a middle school teacher, and even if you're not, this is very helpful for probably like many, many age levels beyond middle school. But Another National Science Foundation grant that we are working on about watershed education, sustainability and training um, and technology, we created a simulation of actual leaf pack sorting. So I can't do it right now and show you, but you can go to leafpacknetwork.org. We've made a few posts about it and you can actually drag leaves you, um, first there are four streams, A, B, C, D at the top. A is like a high quality stream, like excellent. And then you have good and then poor and fair, um, or fair and poor. And you can choose whatever stream you want. Students don't know what A, B, C, and D streams are, but you do as a teacher. And then you kind of put out your leaf packs, you simulate putting out the packs and put out how many sunny days you want. And then um, it'll give you a tray full of leaves and you actually physically pull those leaves away to discover the macroinvertebrates. And you can use a key, whether it's an online key or something that they have in hand and they can match those macroinvertebrates and pull them over to where their, their name is caddisfly. So you can see that we've already pulled over caddisfly, clam and aquatic, macro, aquatic worms. And there's four pages of all the fauna on um, the taxa list. And at the very end, it'll actually help you calculate the biotic index score. But what's really cool is in addition to that, you can do a little habitat assessment on that particular stream. Again, there's four different stream um, kinds there. And then there's a chemistry section with the Lamont 
low cost water quality kit. It's a small little can, white can of all kinds of tests that you can get from Lamont. And it'll simulate that. So you can, the students will actually click phosphorus and it'll say, click on step one, two, three, and four, and they'll actually run the test, come up with the rating and type in their answer. And so it's a really, really cool experience if you can't go out and do it physically yourself. So check that out. So tonight we have a bunch of Leaf Pack Network superstars joining us. And so we've got um, kind of four different, I'll call them teams. Some are just single, some are um, pairs and mostly they're teachers and professors, instructors and partners from around North America that have been doing Leaf Pack and have um, come to share their wisdom, which we really could use at this time. And so we're gonna have um, our Arizona group, Susan Brown and Carrie Jenkins, they're both um, middle school teachers at different middle schools in Arizona, um, start us off. And then we're gonna have that with that follow up with Dr. Jyoti Strometz as a gifted support teacher that we worked with just last year. So she's kind of fresh and new, but she's now an expert. I, I just have to claim her as an expert. <laughs> but she worked with another um, gifted support teacher at another school who couldn't make it tonight, but um, she's gonna share their journey and story. Then we're gonna have Brittany Sinicola. I hope, Brittany, congratulations on your new marriage. I hope I pronounced your new last name. Yes, uh, thank you. Great. <laughs> she's an earth science educator at a local high school here in Pennsylvania. And she partnered with Laura Hopak from a local county conservation district. So they're gonna share their story too. Um, they started just last year as well. And Sherry Hinks is gonna wrap this up, which is a course coordinator um, at the Department of Integrative Biology with the University of Guelph in Ontario, Canada, and has a really, really amazing, unique story to share about her college students and still getting them out in the field to do leaf pack. So really excited. I can't wait to hear all of these stories. And so I am going to um, stop sharing my screen and hand it over to our first duo from Arizona. If you'd like to start, Susan and Carrie. Great. Hi, everybody. Um, it's really exciting uh, to be here, and we thank all those East Coast uh, people for being here late. It was exciting to see a few West Coasters here, too. Um, but anyway, yeah, thanks so much for having us. Um, well, let's, we'll, we'll just start by doing a, a quick introduction of ourselves. Sure. I'm Susan Brown. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm a seventh grade science teacher at Northland Preparatory Academy here in Flagstaff, Arizona at 7,000 feet. That's right. Um, uh, and I, I also am in Flagstaff, Arizona. My name's Carrie Jenkins. I teach at a, a, a school actually very close to Susan, uh, Sanawan <laughs> Middle School, doing sixth grade science. And we've been doing this for 10 years. Um, actually, I was Carrie Jenkins student teacher back in the day, and then we just kept working afterwards. So it's been a great working relationship. And I said, hey, let's go ahead and try this once I was out on my own. And then we just started doing it together. So we, we like it. Yeah, yeah, I, it, it's been great. I even, I, I did seventh grade for a long time and then recently switched to sixth grade and we just keep going. So um, I guess the first thing, uh, you know, when we started um, doing leaf packs with our students, we really wanted to incorporate the scientific process. That was really kind of the, the, the reason we were searching for something that would be really authentic. And so, but most of our research questions honestly came about by accident. Um, Susan and I have learned a lot of things the hard way, <laughs> as, but um, one, our, the first year we tried this, we gosh, we got the idea a little bit late. So we thought, oh, we better get out and collect some leaves real quick. So we went out, collected a bunch of dry leaves and we realized we didn't have enough. And so we thought, well, gosh, what are we gonna do? What it, we said, well, how about we compare them with fresh leaves? And well, we got some great results. Um, most of our questions have come about that way where we've just really utilized what we had available to us. Um, at first we had a pretty stinky pond of reclaimed water because you can imagine in Arizona, we don't have quite as much water as a lot of other places. And 
So we were using this little stinky pond for a while. And then we started driving down to Oak Creek Canyon near Sedona and really comparing that, um, you know, the, the a natural free flowing stream, which was great, but then it's quite a drive from where we are. So we then um, decided to switch sources and we now use um, another water source close to us, but that has just kind of made our questions evolve every year, but it's been pretty um, exciting because it's, it's kind of a mystery and we get to be creative. Yep. So besides coming up with uh, questions on the fly. We, we've we learned things the hard way, as Carrie said. Um, these are some of the things that we learned the hard way in the field, things that you should consider. And one is you might need to consider if you need permission for placing the leaf packs. If perhaps you are working in national forest or you're working uh, within city limits, we learned in Oak Creek that this was national forest. And when we wanted to place our leaves, which we'd been placing there for a few years, we went to get them involved because we wanted to move places. And we they wanted to see the size of the holes in our leaf packs. And doing so, we found out that our leaf pack holes were too big because of an organism called the narrow headed or the it was the narrow headed gardener snake and they're just specialized in this one area and if they get in the leaf packs they can't go out so they made us change the size of the holes in our bags in order to place them in the water source uh, for picture canyon that's our new place um, we learned that we carry writes a permit every single year to allow us to do that because that's part of city property. So find out if you need any kind of permission because there might be some things that you don't know about that particular watershed that you should be aware of. Other things that are we learned the hard way is use signage like the one in the top left. Please do not disturb science experiments. So people know like, hey, this is something going on. This is legit. The one year we didn't do that. Uh, the way that the rope was across the river, someone walked down and must have thought it was trash and they cut the rope and all 30 of our packs went downstream. So we didn't get leaf packs that year. And it was very disappointing because we didn't go back down. We're like, no. So signage is important. Um, other considerations are Getting the students involved, what level do you want students involved? We'll talk about that a little bit later. You also want to know, is your water going to rise or go down? Are you, are you in a time where there could be flooding or that there could be a drought? We've returned and we've had leaf packs high and dry on the side of the river. We're like, oh no, like those weren't sitting in the water for how long? So those are some things you consider. Um, other things are how you're going to secure the leaf pack. Um, how are you going to keep them in place? And then lastly, uh, we learned kind of the hard way that having two big igloo containers and putting the bags in Ziplocs and throwing them in there with a little water is a great way to transport them. So those are some things that we learned the hard way in the field. Well, and, and we've learned a lot of things the hard way in the classroom too. <laughs> of course. Um, but these are really some tips and tricks that we have discovered over the years, and we'd love to share to make your life a little bit easier. Um, <laughs> one thing we've done ahead of time is just gathered as many leaves as possible to store for future years. Um, and, you know, we don't have to deal with mold too much in Arizona, but that might be something that you have to consider. Um, also, we do a lot of prep work before actually dissecting those leaf packs with our students. So we do a lot of pre-rinsing of the packs um, before we place them in trays for the students. A lot of times there's a lot of mud, uh, especially if the packs sink a little bit. Um, so that really makes it go a little bit faster in a class period. We set up all of our materials prior to the students arriving that day in the classroom to dissect those packs. Um, we familiarized our students with all the materials, hand lenses, how to read a dichotomous key, um, the use of microscopes or stereoscopes. And we find that it really just helps them be efficient. Um, they don't have to spend all their time playing with the equipment. Um, and we set up lab groups ahead of time. So the students know exactly who they're working with, where they're gonna be, what materials they're using. 
And we really show them the data table because we want them to record accurately and be really familiar with what that data table looks like. All right. Uh, don't go it alone. <laughs> Carrie and I started doing this, just the two of us, and we realized that makes it really hard. Use the kids. They are a free resource for you. Use your child labor. All right. Fun fact here. Uh, we used to spend around 30 hours in just personal time outside of school to pack the leaf packs, get them all ready, go down. And this is when we didn't have kids involved. Now that we have the kids involved, we have them packing the leaf packs, weighing them out, doing a lot of the prep work for us. Now we spend about two or three hours outside of uh, class time. So it's really cut down utilizing those students to help out. Bring in community partners. We have USGS and we have uh, NAU, which is our local university. We have them come in. We help, they come in, they help us identify the macroinvertebrates. The students get to meet people who are actually out in the field that do things like this for a job. The practicum students at NAU are awesome. They're doing their own experiments with placing leaves in water. So we bring them in as well. Parents are great depending on your school and how involved the parents are, but they're wonderful to come in and just kind of help students uh, pick through the leaves. And then of course, as Tara was saying, the Leaf Pack Network has so many free resources and videos. It's such a, it's a wonderful resource to use. So get familiar with their site and use it there. Get help, don't go it alone. <laughs> That's right, and it's uh, you know it's great also to partner with another teacher. That's been really valuable. Um, so sorry, I skipped that a little bit too fast, but you might be wondering, especially when you hear if you're new to leaf packs and you think, oh, this is a lot of work. There's a lot of materials involved and a lot of time uh, while you figure things out. Um, so why do it? Um, it has just incredible value. And that's why we've continued to problem solve and get better at this for 10 years, because not only does it have connection to science standards, um, it really engages students in the scientific process and it's authentic. Students are collecting real data, reporting it in a database. Um, so they really feel that their work is meaningful, it's powerful, um, and it tells a story of our area. We are able to collaborate with community members, sharing, um, you know, so students get to know what um, the scientists in our community do as well. And the students absolutely love it. Um, and not only do they love it, but we really love it too. Absolutely. And that was a, we do work together. If I wasn't working with Carrie, I don't know if I'd been doing, I'd be doing this for 10 years, but depending on your time, there's so many different extension ideas that you can branch off and do. And I just wanted to share a couple of the extension ideas, we call it beyond the leaf pack that we've done. I know Carrie's taken her class to the water treatment plant. She was comparing reclaimed water to free flowing water, took her kids through uh, the water treatment plant and in, included that in her lesson. I included a local issue, which was using reclaimed water to make snow on the San Francisco peaks here. And the students were able to learn the difference in water quality with using the biotic index of in, being in free flowing and reclaimed water. And then we had them think through, is it okay to put reclaimed water on the peaks and what that might do to the watershed? So we were able to bring in some local issues. You could talk about careers in this type of industry, bringing in those community part partners from USGS or from the university. And I've also in the past have taken the students out after they've dissected leaf packs and they looked at water quality and we're like, oh, the water is not as great as we thought it was, is have them go out and do a big watershed clean out, uh, clean up in the local watershed, which feels really good after when you're done, you get bags of trash, you feel like you're, you're doing something and you're really making a difference. So those are some of the extension ideas that we have done in both our classrooms. So that, that, that's all that we have. Any questions or maybe we wanna wait till the very end and let our other presenters. 
present to Tara. Thank yeah, you. no, that was so, so great. Thank you so much, Carrie and Susan. It was really insightful. And, you know, this leaf pack method is a professional method, you know, and it was um, created out of an interest for of a teacher of um, our past director at the Stradwater Research Center, Dr. Bernard Sweeney, his eighth grade um, daughters, science teachers needed some way to bring the stream to the classroom. And so he was like, well, this is a good method. Maybe we'll try this. And then it turned out to be a really great opportunity. Um, and then it became this network and there's a kit, but it is a lot. There are a lot of steps. When I was coming up here, I was like, oh my goodness. But, <laughs> um, you know, instead of just going out in the stream right there using a net, but there are, like you mentioned, I'm glad you did so many advantages to just going through this step-by-step, -step, the connection to the actual forest and the land, which you really don't get too often with just going in with a, a dip net. And it's a passive method. A lot of teachers like it because it's not really disturbing the stream. And it's easy to bring that stream back to the classroom if you can't bring the students actually into the stream as well. So there are a lot of advantages, which I'm sure a lot of the teachers are going to be mentioning today. And Laura had a good question. She said, how does funding come about for a teacher or an educator to get a leaf pack kit? And I don't know, Carrie and Susan, how did you get funding for yours? Was it like a PT, the PTA or self-funding or? Um, well, I went to a workshop and got a free kit, which was helpful. Right. Um, <laughs> and then I brought it back and Carrie was able to build the same kit um, on the cheap for the longest time where you don't, I mean, you can buy the full kit if you can get funding, but if not, you can really do this, which was making your own materials and just getting the leaf packs. We actually, the ones we ended up using, the university donated to us because students were doing leaf packs through their dissertations and we needed the smaller bags. Carrie, you can probably answer a little more because I know you eventually ended up getting some funding from, I think, your, your school, correct? Yeah, well, for, I think for probably eight of the 10 years we've done this, I really did a piecemeal, you know, kit. I really just made my own. Um, I, I, I did buy some, some big lenses to use, but um, what I ended up doing is, is I applied for a little grant so that I could purchase a pack. So it was an APS grant for through our, 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 our Arizona public service. So I, that's how I ended up getting one. Cause it's true. That's a little tricky. And the, and, and the kit is really has all kinds of great materials. So I would recommend if it's, if you're able to get a kit in some way, I mean, it really is nice compared to building your own, but it's possible to do this both ways. <laughs> well, great. Thanks so much. And maybe we can have um, all of our subsequent speakers speak to obtaining kits and how you pieced it together. Cause a lot of these um, components are probably in and around your classrooms or garages or basements, but some of them are special, you know, like the sorting sheets and the dichotomous keys and things, but you can work around that. So don't let the funding part get, get in your way. And we can also help you with that. Um, but I guess let's go into our next in the queue, circle to Pennsylvania from Arizona, fly on over East and um, Jethi, if you want to kick this off, thanks so much. All right, sounds great. Let me go ahead and grab my screen. Bring it up in the slide. Oh, let me go back. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, I'm Jody Stromatz, and I, as Tara said, I'm a teacher in Tradiffin East Town school district at uh, Tradiffin East Town Middle School. And thank goodness I did not go it alone. I was with Tara probably every step of the way. <laughs> um, and so I've been really interested in the Child Center for many years. And luckily, I mean, I think I live like 20 minutes away and my school is about 40 minutes away. And um, as far as funding goes, just going back to that really quick, answering that question. Um, there was actually some COVID money that came out and, um, it, you know, it had to be used directly with the students, uh, somehow virtually, and this was it. So I was, I was given, um, a small budget to purchase some 
new materials and uh, I took advantage of it, uh, which was really exciting. And I bought, I think I bought eight kits <laughs> just because I, I didn't know when the funding was going to come back again. <laughs> so uh, really, really blessed in that way. Um, so I did work with another teacher, uh, Bill Adlin. He was over at Valley Forge Middle School. We're just outside of Philadelphia area. And uh, we uh, were trying to figure out what creek to work with. And we're, I'm a gifted support teacher. And so I only work with a small amount of students uh, who study water quality throughout the entire year. And so really my population is only about 15 students. And then Bill Adlin probably had about 20, 25. And um, so they're positives to that because it's smaller. However, we only get to see them a set amount of times during each semester. So we really needed to cram in as much as we could for uh, each time that we were with the kids. So I guess that was one of my disadvantages and one way, you know, one thing that I had to do uh, in adaption. So you see here, um, on the screen is a map of where we're at. We're right outside of Valley Forge Park. And I highlighted in yellow where the creek is, where we are, Trout Creek. That's where we decided to uh, put the, the leaf packs. And then you'll also notice that there are some green rectangles there right along the highlight. And so when Tara, Bill and I went out to um, put the leaf packs in, we uh, saw some neighbors coming out and realized we should probably ask it if uh, it's okay if we go in there, even though it's public property for rivers in Pennsylvania. Um, but we did, we knocked up on the door and let them know what was going on. And of course there was a small connection. They were, their kids had gone through the district and they had actually, the wife had taught in the district and just small connections here and there. So um, it was nice that we were able to make a, a community connection, but also make them aware of what was uh, going on within the creek in their backyard, right along their driveway. And um, so let me go ahead and go to uh, the next slide. So um, during COVID, I, so this is my first year doing the Leaf Pack Network and um, went back and forth with Tara many times about how to do this because the majority of my students were virtual. I only had like half of my students, which is only like seven or eight, who were coming into school. So um, it, there were a lot of um, adaptations that we had to do. Tara, Bill and I wound up doing a lot of uh, the work and we made videos. <laughs> Tara was very generous to come out with videos and a microphone and we um, videotaped everything that we did, going to the site, explaining where we were, creating the leaf packs, placement of packs, the water chemistry tests, the physical tests, everything you can imagine we put together in a video and um, which the kids appreciated, but I think they didn't feel quite as connected as maybe they will be this year. I'm hoping um, all my students are in school this year. So hoping to have something that is a little bit more interactive. Um, but Tara did a really great job. She came to two of my seminars and reviewed how to use identification guide as well as the ID key and um, let them practice with the bio index sheets. And we did that all online through uh, OneNote, so, um, which is a Microsoft Word uh, app. And um, so that was an adaptation. We did everything virtually, except for when we brought back the leaf packs and I had a few kids who were there to go through uh, the packs with us. Um, and so the retrieval and the return to school you know, that was Bill and I and Tara doing all of that. So uh, the students really had to work socially distanced because of COVID. So um, going into tips, I would say that uh, making lists of materials before you go out and then double checking that list because I did forget a few things. <laughs> and Tara was kind enough to loan some things and 
Um, so I definitely will um, have it, my Excel spreadsheet all set to go for when we go out again. Um, and, you know, just like uh, Carrie had said, inform landowners who are right around you, or if you're, if you're by any, get permission if needed. And um, my other thing I wanted to say, stick with the three to four week window that's recommended. Um, we put ours in and didn't retreat them until five weeks. And um, a lot of the leaves had come out already. We had a couple of storms come through. And so um, I would definitely try and stick with the three to four week window. Um, you know, of course, uh, go and check on them. As you ladies had described earlier, you want to make sure that they a, are still there and haven't been caught up by a storm or someone picking them up. I love the idea about putting on a note saying this is a science experiment in progress um, because I was nervous about someone taking them. So I will definitely do that next time. Um, one other thing, I did not prepare enough time for setup before the identification of macroinvertebrates. I'm definitely going to ask parents or um, other teachers to help out with that. It was definitely a lot uh, for me to do. And um, I would also say set up a, I don't know if you have a document camera or a microscope connected to a computer so that all students could uh, share and see the macroinvertebrates uh, that everyone else sees. And my best outcomes, you know, I think that allowing plenty of time for the students to practice with the um, identification of macroinvertebrates, which Tara had done with my kiddos, which was fabulous. Uh, when I did the second session with uh, Bill in the afternoon at his school, we did allow for a little bit more time with those kids, which was really helpful. Um, you know, the community outreach that we were able to create was really incredible, and we shared uh, the tolerance index rating with them, and they were really appreciative. And I believe um, that Bill was also getting in contact with someone from uh, the local uh, water, uh, maybe it was USGS, I think it was. So just working with the community and for the kids to be able to understand that and learn about the sensitivity of the watershed in their backyards, understanding. So right next door was a baseball field where a lot of them do play baseball. And so understanding the repercussions for litter and um, erosion and other things that do happen. So um, it's only my first year doing this. I have uh, really enjoyed it. And I'm really excited to learn uh, some tips from all of you. And um, just really looking forward to having my all of my students in school this year to uh, do it over again. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Jyoti. Yeah. Remarkable, you know, every time, like even your first year, first two years, first three years, you still like, there's always things to like remember, right? And <laughs> yeah. As you go along, you know, and every year could be different with like, did you have a big um, you know, rain event or two is a wet year for your monitoring. That's always a fun, fun time, right? Yeah. Uh, go out there, like you said, weekly. So those are all such great tips. And, um, and what was really cool too, with like Jothi and Bill, they did um, stream chemistries to complement the data that they got from the aquatic macroinvertebrates. So they took it, you know, at the very beginning when we placed the packs and at the end to kind of give more information to the students about that question, like what is the health of this creek? So that was a nice compliment in addition. I think a lot of you probably do that, but um, it's really great. So thank you, Jyothi. And she's still You're welcome for all this, right? <laughs> That's great. All right, so next up we have, I believe the Whitehall High School team of Laura, and yeah, let's, and Brittany, so are y'all ready? I know Laura and I each prepared a couple of slides. Um, I can go first. Uh, I don't know if she's, yep, she's there. She's I don't know if you want yeah, to go first or me. Go for it. Okay. Go for it, Brittany. Thank you. Mm 
And I think we had some really cool mentions too while Brittany's queuing this up, um, you know, about how to project the macroinvertebrates on a screen. You know, there's a lot of cool tools out there now. There's some digital scopes that you can up to even like a smart pad. There are apps and things like that. So if you ever have questions, like feel free and like the whiteboard option, um, just even videos, like videoing your macroinvertebrates crawling around in a pan is amazing. And Leadback Network, we have an, our YouTube station too. We have um, a playlist called Macros in Motion. And one is actually just little snippets a minute that I took years ago and just put them all together of macroinvertebrates in the Petri dishes. So it's not the greatest resolution, but they're there. And there's a, a quiz version too. So if you wanted your students to look at some, um, you know, without the ID on there and have them actually try to ID, then you can use that quiz version as well. So check those out. Let's get Susan. We saw a dragon nymph, dragonfly nymph eat. I may find nymph under the scope. Ah, the kids loved it. <laughs> it's great. Awesome. Brittany, can um, we, do you need help or anything? I'm trying to share my screen and it's not letting me. Okay, shoot. Um, should be enabled, but um, are you using a PowerPoint or? PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah, and you're going to share screen and then just popping up one of your, your screens that you've got. We can. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Oh, shoot. If you want to, you can. Um, we can Laura. We can have Laura go first, and then if you wanted to, like, email me your slides or something right now, real quick, I can pop them up for you while Laura goes in the next few minutes. So, but that sure, let me email you real fast. I'm yeah. sorry, I don't know why. No, it's it's the Zoom. Thing. I haven't used Zoom since last year. Um, no problem, Laura. Can you you feel like you can go? Cool. Yeah. Yep, that's good. Yeah, my daughter just ran in here. I'll look uh, this. Can you see the big blue screen? Okay. Yes. So I partnered with, I, I'm a non-formal environmental educator. I work for the Lehigh County Conservation District. So I go into the schools and help them or assist them or provide environmental education programs. Got in contact with Whitehall High School. Brittany does ninth grade students. I reached out to Tara and the three of us work together. Um, so in Pennsylvania, COVID last year, Guests were not allowed in the schools and kids were not allowed to have field trips. So I met Brittany and her coworker out in the stream one day and I have two young kids. I'm working from home. My kids are doing online school. Um, so I brought my kids because they just have to come along with me. And we were out in the creek the first time for two hours. Kids loved it. Picking up leaves for two hours. Native, you know, you're learning about all the native plants, getting in the creek. And what we did was took photos and videos of the entire process. Videos, I will tell you, keep them to like under a minute. I would keep them to around a minute or less or else kids get kind of bored. So um, yes, it could be adapted to fit all age groups. You can do this at the elementary level. We did this in spring with ninth graders. This fall, I'm going to be doing it with another high school, um, but you can easily adjust this to any grades uh, actually, I did a video on safety, which was cool, like my big rubber boots and Brittany's coworker had on the chest waders. So I took pictures of that. Um, I was actually out with the PA Fish and Boat Commission and they would not let any kid in the stream that did not have closed toed shoes or like rubber boots or sneakers because they were scared of something happening, slipping. It was so slippery because of all the moss. So yes, you can adjust this to all age groups. Kids weren't allowed out in the stream, so we took this back to the classroom. We took photos of everything and we did Zoom presentations with Tara. It was extremely successful. Um, the unexpected. <laughs> so we left our packs and I think it was actually four to five weeks and we were scared of the flooding and stuff. And this is actually a spot, it's right next to our local zoo. So it's crazy when you leave the zoo, everyone has to drive through the creek to leave. It's crazy because driving through a creek seems very <laughs> um, non-environmentally safe, but you're allowed to. It's been it's been like this for years. I remember doing it when we were kids. But it's it's an area where they have picnic tables and porta potties, so a lot of kids 
playing the creek here. So we were scared about, oh my gosh, what if we put our leaf packs in here and kids take it? A lot of people fish here. We did put our little signs saying, please do not disturb. This is a, this is a little um, experiment. We just took turns. Whoever was available, like every Wednesday, go out to the creek. What'd you find? So Brittany went out one time, I think her coworker went out one time, me and my kids went out one time, played in the creek. Something at the four weeks, we, we emptied our leaf packs and we were getting all of the same macros. We're thinking, oh my gosh, we're not getting any, any diversity. We were getting like 50 of the same bugs. So what we did was we used this kick net and we picked up rocks along the stream and we found, oh my gosh, crayfish, humongous, leeches. My kids were, we found more on the side of the stream and in this kick net than we did, actually did in the leaf packs. So just be prepared because if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't find anything, start picking up rocks because you will find something. We saw a ton of snakes that day. It was crazy. Um, <laughs> so you can always adjust it, make it fun, bring it back to the classroom. We had five gallon buckets. We had huge trays. Uh, it's just fun. You're outside. <laughs> That's all I had. I just wanted to keep it short and sweet. So I don't know if Brittany yeah, great, Laura. Yeah, I've got a patient. So, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll share that. That's awesome. That's a great kick, kick off and tips too about what to do if you may not find anything in your packs. So, because um, that does happen. And, you know, leaf pack is one habitat type that you're approaching. You're not doing every single section of the stream. You are getting probably the most potential section of your stream for the high diversity move my cat here <laughs> yes so. and the kick net it's cool so if you do have kids out there we have them all go upstream and we call it like the creek shuffle and have them like shuffle yeah. around do the twist have them do little dances they think it's hilarious have them like dig their feet in the ground and you will collect so much stuff we did we found it was um, we couldn't believe all the stuff we found it, it was great. fun oh it looks like britney's is working so Thank yeah, Sarah. <laughs> I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, of course. So that's great. Go ahead, Brittany. Just let just cue me when you want the next slide. Uh, yeah. So like Laura said, um, we did our leaf pack experiment uh, by a local zoo uh, called Lehigh Valley Zoo, and it took place in the Jordan Creek, which flows through it. So I um, did this for the first time last year so this is kind of the perspective of someone who's uh doing it for the first time during covid which obviously impacted the execution um so how i went about setting this up was i reached out to the stroud water research center which i remembered learning about um in high school myself so i knew of them and reached out to them and that's how i became connected with tara and uh, she actually put me in contact with Laura, um, who was working for a place that also gave me some internship opportunities while I was in high school. So I feel like, I think we had some acquaintances that we, we, so we knew each other through people, but I don't know if I ever actually had met her before. So that's kind of how I became connected with them. And then uh, once we all met, we talked via Zoom one day and decided we were gonna go ahead and do this. And, uh, so we selected the location, which was Jordan Creek, um, because there was relevance to the student population. Uh, many of them had been there on field trips before and were aware of it and visited it with their families. And then Laura went ahead and obtained permission, which I know a couple of people talked about um, from the local parks and recreation department. And they gave the okay that we could set up this experiment. And then uh, Laura, myself and my colleague, Justin Kondikoff, who also uh, is a ninth grade earth science teacher with me. Um, the three of us went to uh, Jordan Creek and we set up this, the leaf packs. And uh, Laura's conservation district was able to provide a lot of the supplies, the netting, uh, the sign saying, do not disturb a rebar, which um, my colleague uh, brought a hammer and we hammered the rebar into the stream and that's what secured them. Um, and that was nice because uh, even with the water flowing more heavily in the location we chose that really secured it. And we put them in the middle of the stream by the riffles with the moving water. And we went to the, so after we went there, 
and set that up. We um, went and visited the creek four times. And it was nice to have somebody to do it with because I went two times and he went two times uh, just to check and make sure that they were stationary and not tampered with. Um, and after letting a month go by, which is what uh, Laura and Tara has suggested, uh, we went back and we collected uh, the leaf packs, opened them up and documented them. So these are just some pictures of us um, after we took the leaf packs out of the creek. So um, we brought a bunch of bins, a bunch of handheld magnifying glasses. Uh, we had our phones and we uh, took tons of photos and documented everything we found. First, we separated everything in Petri dishes. Then we took pictures of everything. And then uh, like Laura said, we did the kick net and walked along the edge of the stream, which got us even more uh, examples of uh, macros that were present. So implementation in the classroom, uh, we, we did two days via Zoom uh, with the Stroud Water Research Center and the Lehigh County Conservation District. So Tara and Laura came and talked to um, our classes and it, between my about 130 students and my colleagues, 130 students, um, you know, a couple hundred students were able to participate in this. And, you know, given that this was our first time doing it, we sort of just talked about what it was. We just did a basic experiment, which was um, we wanted to uh, determine the quality of the stream. So we did more of a cookie cutter version of this, but it was a nice way to start out, um, especially if you've never done this before um, and your student, you've never done this with students before. It's nice to kind of uh, just do the experiment like the traditional way without uh, too many other variables just to get yourself used to it. Um, and before actually uh, we did the leaf pack experiment, we actually had them come in another time prior to do a model, a model my watershed experiment and that was nice because that sort of like introduced our water and aquatic ecosystems unit. And then the macro invertebrate study uh, a couple of weeks later is what wrapped up that unit for us. So the first day they came on, came in, uh, like I said, we did the model my watershed um, activity. So Tara uh, demonstrated how to use the wiki watershed tool and we investigated and analyzed the health of our local watershed at which was we selected our school district. We're a unique uh, school district because actually all of our schools are on one campus. So uh, we were able to look at our watershed because it's a pretty large area um, just by looking at all the schools and the property that's owned by the district. Um, and then we did uh, results in an accompanying worksheet that Tara provided in a online program called Cami because this again was a virtual moment and only some kids were in the building. So everything had to be online and able to be shared via Zoom um, in Google Classroom. So uh, everything was done online. And then that's how we kicked off our unit. And then at the end of the unit, they came back and we had done our, in the meantime, done our leaf pack study. And uh, we had a Google Slides presentation uh, where we explained how we set up the experiment, um, the whole scientific method, uh, went over the results, you know, had all these pictures, um, and our one, one of our cameras took amazing photos um, that we were able to use um, and identify the pictures of the macros with a taxonomic key, which Tara also provided. And then we used the results to determine our biotic index score again in a worksheet that uh, Tara had provided in Cami, which if you're unfamiliar with, it's um, it turns PDFs into an editable worksheet. So that's really nice. So um, like these things weren't in Google Docs format, but by uploading them to Cami, and I think there's a free version out there available, you, you turn your PDF into like a worksheet and the kids can type on it, they can draw on it. Uh, so that was really nice. And then once we had determined the health of the stream, uh, we had the kids write practice writing like a letter to the Lehigh Valley Zoo explaining the results of the experiment and how that might impact some of the things that go on there because the animals drink from the stream there and kids like Laura was saying play in the water and a lot of people fish there so 
what were the ramifications of the results on those uh, activities that take place there. And uh, just a reflection on the overall thing. Um, it was a great opportunity for students to analyze real world data and meaningful data and draw, draw conclusions. Um, it was a good introduction to a community resource. The Stroud Water Research Center is only an hour and a half away from our school. So uh, none of the students actually had heard of it before. So it was a nice way to let them know what it was, obviously. Um, my high school science teacher telling me about it had an impact. So even if um, you know kids just go there one day with their families to walk around or something, it's a great way to get them uh, to realize that, that place exists. And it was also great uh, discussion of career pathways. And you know, Tara mentioned how internship opportunities could be available for them down the road. Because in high school, uh, we start thinking about careers. And I know in my class, we talk about careers all the time. So it was great to have two people come in and talk about how they got to where they were in their STEM careers and uh, some of the ways the kids could in college uh, pursue similar pathways, so. That's about it. And that's kind of how, again, we went about it. This was our very first time. And, um, you know, there'll be a lot of uh, chances to do this down the road and kind of refine how we did it. I'm excited to work with both of them again and plan on doing it in the spring again. But uh, that was just like a nice way to kind of do it for the first time. And again, it was totally adapted for the COVID moment. Yeah, it was so great um, to have that partnership with uh, Laura. You know, she's so excited and just really willing to come out and help. And it really, I keep hearing that theme with everyone, find partners, find help. Don't try to just do it by yourself. It's a lot to tackle. So, um, and yeah, Stroud Center, we're here. Um, we can come and do virtual programming too. Or if you want us just to come and zoom into your classrooms before you go out in the field, um, in person, we're happy to do that to help lay the foundation and um, model my watershed. I can put that in the chat if you haven't seen that or our Wiki Watershed Toolkit. There's a lot of great free tools and introducing your campus and your watershed is a great first foundational kind of layer to bring into your students before you, you tackle the macroinvertebrates and the idea. So thanks so much for sharing, Laura and Brittany. It's great. Um, Thank you. And last but not least, we're going to go from high school to college and we're going to go to Canada. So Sherry, if you'd like to. Awesome. Well, thank you so in much. Your world. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So hopefully, can you see that? That's yes. The way it's supposed to look. Perfect. Okay. So first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. It's great to hear everybody's perspective, you know, from the young kids all the way through to uh, university. So what I'm going to talk to you tonight about is a little bit about how we adapted it for university. Um, this week has been the first time that I've seen my students in 18 months. We've been in various states of lockdown and the university has been largely closed to any kind of face-to-face -face interaction. Um, so it's, it's kind of exciting being back this week. We just started back this week. So um, it's great to see everybody again. So as we headed into the fall last year, um, we were told that our courses could only be offered remotely. There would be no face-to-face -face offerings. And so, and we hadn't seen the students since March. And the course that I typically teach in the fall semester is a fourth year limnology class. And in this class, it's a required class for our marine and freshwater biology students. It's the program that I teach in. And so when we have them face to face, we typically take them out on various field trips. We go out four times through the semester and we go to local streams and we go to local lakes. And really it's uh, an integrated look at watersheds and you know, how they sample and we're getting them ready to go out and be job ready um, in terms of learning some of these uh, techniques. And so you can see the challenge that we sort of faced is we weren't gonna see them. The only place we were gonna see them was over Zoom. And so they weren't gonna get this sort of hands-on learning experience. So we racked our brains about um, what we could possibly do to get them back out into the field. And we thought, well, we could just go and videotape everything um, and give them the data. But what we really wanted to do was get them out in the field doing things. So, and honestly, I had never heard of the Leaf Pack Network before I started scouring the internet for lots of cool ideas. And, but I've participated in lots of citizen science. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to start this and I'm going to Google citizen science, limnology, aquatic, and put all these sort of strange 
search things into my Google. And lo and behold, the Leaf Pack Network popped up. And that was sort of my aha moment. And I'm like, okay, this is gonna be okay. We're gonna be able to have the students go out and do something on their own. Uh, they're gonna get some data and they're still gonna be able to continue on. Um, so we reached out to Tara and she was super, super helpful and super, super engaging. Um, just in terms of, yeah, you know what, you definitely can adapt this for uh, university level. And she gave us lots of great suggestions. And so after a bunch of agonizing months trying to sort it out, we decided we were going to focus on two hands-on activities through the semester. And we were going to send them a kit so that they had everything that they needed. So we sent them stuff to do some toxicity testing, um, as well as the leaf pack network. And I'm not going to talk about the toxicity stuff. If anybody's interested, you, you can ask questions about that. But um, so here's a, a copy of what we put in each of the kits. We included, you know, welcome cards and safety was a big, big concern for us. We were sending out fourth year students. So they're, you know, 20 years old-ish um, and we were sending them out into waterways. And when I have them in the field with me, they're not terribly careful. So it, it's a little bit like herding cats. You know, one group goes one direction, one group goes another direction and it's always a bit of um, management. So even though they're at that age, they still sometimes don't follow rules very carefully. So we, um, the university, we met with the occupational health and safety and had to go through all sorts of hoops in order to be able to do that. And there was the stuff that we sent out for the leaf pack networks. And I'm not sure who it was earlier talking about sort of cobbling these kits together. We looked at the Lamotte option, it was pretty pricey. Um, and so for about $20, we managed to put together all of this stuff for the students. And we received a small grant in order to do it. We, there was various pandemic funding through the university. Um, but in the end, we put together a pretty cool kit. We sent them bags. We actually sourced the bags. They're just grocery bags that they put all their vegetables in. And so we got those from actually from a local grocery store. Probably the most expensive thing in their kits was a thermometer. We sent them thermometers. We sent them some water tests just those pool sort of test kits and forceps and everything that they needed um, was included in this kit because we weren't sure in Ontario, we've gone through various states of lockdown where we weren't really sure if the students were gonna be able to even go out and buy anything if they didn't have it at home. We gave them a safety whistle um, and I met with them um, once a week for three hours. So often we would talk about what they were gonna do, how to go about doing it, or when we were actually sorting the organisms, we did that sort of as a class. So the leaf packs enabled us to take the students on a journey through their watersheds. Um, so wherever they were studying from, which was really exciting during the pandemic time. So we had students all across, mostly in Canada, lots of students out in BC, lots of students in Ontario. But what it allowed them to do was take a journey through their own watershed and um, engage with sort of their local communities. So we started there. Um, we talked a little bit about factors that might affect their watershed and their watershed health. We taught them how to use, um, in Ontario, we've got this uh, Ontario flow assessment tool that creates watersheds for them. I mean, it gives them lots of different information about where their watersheds are, the health of their watershed and various things. And I think that's similar to the one that um, Tara was talking about, um, but this one is specific for Ontario and there's various ones for various provinces. And then the students looked at their own stream. They looked at the biological and physical and chemical factors that have, might affect their stream. And so how did the net leaf pack network fit into all this? First, Tara joined us um, and she joined us, I think it was week two of the semester. And this one thing that I've really loved about teaching remotely is it, it's allowed us to connect um, with various people. And uh, Brittany had just mentioned, you know, making sure that the students were you know, what's the next step in their path? And so it was great for them to hear about Tara's journey um, to get where she is now and what kind of job she has and what she's had in the past. So it was amazing. Um, and it was really great because she was there and she could really engage the students. She was great at generating the enthusiasm and got the students to buy into this. So the students were sent everything they needed in order to participate. They watched the videos. We had done our own videos. Um, the ones from the leaf pack are great, but they didn't address the sort of specific safety concerns that we had because we we're sending the students out on their own. Um, so they filled their bags or they filled their bags with the leaves. They headed out to their local stream. They were given, um, we spent a lot of time talking about safety and like other people have mentioned, making sure that they had permission 
we gave them these bag tags that said University of Guelph Research and Progress, and that was absolutely key um, to these. Um, it also provided a contact a number, which was my number. Um, so we said, you know, anybody that wants more information about what we're doing, you know, please reach out and uh, let me know. So my phone number was on there as well as my email address. And we did have community members reach out and say, hey, you know, I was walking the dog and I came across these leaf packs and what are you doing? And then we also had a couple that had washed up on shore. And so people had said, oh, I came across this. I don't think it's supposed to be on the land. What should I do with it? Um, so we had them just put them back in and they were all tagged to a student. So we knew which uh, leaf pack actually belonged to which uh, student and they could go out and check them. And this was a really stressful week for me um, because I knew they were out in the water and I was you know, hopeful that everything was going to go okay. And they all took somebody from their social bubble with them. So often it was a mom or a dad or siblings or roommates. And one of the kind of fun things was is we heard all these great stories about their experiences in the field. And, you know, they really enjoyed taking mom and dad out with them to set these leaf packs. And so they were really able to share some of their learning um, with their family members or their roommates or siblings. And, you know, we heard stories about dads falling in dads. Dads seemed to get very excited about doing this and they fell in more than I think any other group of people. So they left their packs in for three weeks, then they went back out to the stream, they pulled their bags in. Um, some of the bags, so in the class of 60, um, some of the bags did become dislodged. They all had two bags in the stream. Um, some of them ended up getting more than that in there. But in the end, only two went completely missing. So out of 120 bags, we only had two go completely missing, which we were actually absolutely delighted with. And again, we had made videos about how to do that. On their own, they sorted the macroinvertebrates. They took videos. There were various assessments along the way where they had to take a picture of their favorite invertebrate. We did it with them and showed them some of the cool things that we found. We also did some kit net sampling for some comparisons about you know, differences in artificial substrate versus kit net substrate. Um, and so that was kind of fun too. We spent four weeks doing some stream bioassessments, so generating hypotheses and talking about various factors that might affect their watershed. They were working in a group to compare uh, various streams. So they looked and they identified these organisms. We went a little bit beyond what the leaf pack network protocol calls for. Um, we went to the family level, only because some of the metrics that we were using uh, require that. And so we, we were using fairly standard uh, biometric analysis uh, for the students. So we got the intolerant ones, we got um, ones that are fairly tolerant, we got what the uh, EPTs in there. And then these were just examples of some of the biological metrics that the students had to calculate. Um, we gave them worksheets in order to be able to do that. We had some experts come in and tell us how those were developed. So we did things like taxa richa, how many different things are in your sample so they could count those. And depending on that, it tells you what, sort of, uh, what your water quality is. We looked at you know, which organisms were dominant. We looked at the EPT index, which is the same one that the um, leaf pack network does. And all of these things tell us a story. We looked at various feeding strategies of the organisms. And again, that's very, uh, tells you lots and lots of things about water quality. We compared it to what a model stream might look like. And in the end, the students came up with tables that looked like this. So it had their metrics down one side. And then it's, um, you know, what does that mean? Was the water quality fair? Was it not impacted? Was it subpolluted? And often the students would get these very conflicting results. And so it was a good lesson in, you know, often you have to use more than one metric depending on what you're trying to measure. We were trying to assess stream health. Um, and so, you know, some of them are really good at detecting organic pollution. Some are good at detecting heavy metals and things like that. And then we explored the data. Um, we asked the students to upload it to the LeafPAC network, but we also had our own um, one that was done through the university. The one that was done through the university, the students were required to do, and it was part of one of their assessments. The LeafPAC network, um, we had said, you know, it's optional, but the LeafPAC network would definitely love to see your data. In the end, not as many students posted their data to that as we had wanted. I think it was just getting 
too late in the semester. There were no marks allocated for that part because we were always concerned about privacy. Some students don't like giving up their email addresses and things like that. Um, so probably just a little bit too late in the semester for us. And so if I did it again with the students, I definitely would allocate some marks um, to that. What did the students say about it? So here was, we just did a general word cloud of this was the, we just took their feedback and dumped it into one of these word clouds. So the bigger it is, um, it means that that was more comments that we received. So you can see that they really liked the independence of it. Um, I had a couple students call me when they were out in the field and say, oh my gosh, I forgot my thermometer, what should I do? You know, and we worked through it and they sorted out what they were gonna do. Um, so they loved the leaf packs. It was one of their favorite things to do. They liked the field kits and they really just liked being independent. Um, and there's just some of the other feedback that we got. And it was interesting to talk to one of the consultants who regularly, one of the environmental consultants who hires our students. And he was in the process of hiring for the summer. And one of the students said, oh, well, this is what we did. And he got really, really excited about it. He's one of our alumni. And uh, he had heard about this and he said, I really liked how independent it was. And he actually ended up giving us money for a remote field course in the summertime too. So that was kind of fun. And I think most of the tips um, have been covered. Um, so I'm not going to go through those just in the interest of time. But what did we learn? Um, you know, we learned that it really does take twice as long to do anything and it takes even longer over Zoom and something, you know, a presentation that you think is going to take you 10 minutes ends up taking 40 because the students ask lots of questions and they were really, really engaged and they wanted interaction with each other. And a lot of our students had cats and cats drink water and they knock cups over. And I can't tell you how many students said, oh, I was sorting my sample and the cat ate, you know, these aquatic bugs, are they gonna be okay? And one call in the middle of the night about that. I said, yep, you know what? It's just stream water. There's nothing in there that's gonna hurt them. Our students were amazing. They were resilient. They were patient. They were enthusiastic. And I don't think we could have done the semester as well as we did without the leaf pack network. And it takes really a village to do all of it. Um, you know, I had a really supportive boss who was an enthusiastic adopter of new and innovative ways to teach. He said yes to all of the crazy ideas and found ways to pay for it all. We had a gaggle of TAs. We had amazing um, volunteers and guest speakers and we just, you know, lots and lots of hours, but it was really, really successful. Um, and largely because of the Leaf Pack Network, they loved it. And this semester, we are back face-to-face -face teaching. We're not going to use the leaf packs in this course. Um, we are going to do them as part of our research course, and we're going to um, compare the leaf pack. What do they find in the leaf pack compared to something like a kick net? Um, and so we're going to do some of those kind of analysis this semester with a different group of students. And I think that's it for me. And that was our whirlwind tour. It was a wonderful whirlwind tour. Thank you so much. We got a lot of great feedback already from your presentation, Sherry. Um, and just good tips of things, you know, content to share, um, ways to go about this. And it does, like you said, again, it does take a village and you just got to try it out. And it was great that you came up with these innovative, smaller kits just to make the magic happen because, yeah, you don't have to buy that big leaf pack network um, Lamont kit. Again, it's awesome, but so much of the contents that you need are just right around the corner, probably, and just accessible or reusable. I love reusing our um, my lemon or orange or lime sacks for my leaf packs if I need them, and it's it's so great to be able to do that. So, um, just looking at the chat box, yeah, lots of note taking. Wow, great job! I want to take your class, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It was so wonderful to interact with your students. It really was lovely. And the same for Jothi's students and Laura's students. Um, and yeah, everybody's students. It was just really great. Brittany's students really enjoyed it. So the word cloud idea was really, really great. Talking about river continuum concept. Yes, if you haven't done that yet, um, there is a section on the Stroudwater Research Center. Our one of our past directors wrote a paper about that concept and helped to form that funda foundational idea. And it's not perfect for around the world, but it's a great idea to start off with. And talks about how little streams and bigger rivers are different, community-wise, fish, macroinvertebrates, algae, leaves. Um, so it's a great 
great concept to bring out. And a safety whistle, very good idea, Sherry. <laughs> we actually had those logoed with the university logo. Oh, that's a great thing. Yeah, that's so cool. And so sorry about the cats. I know that that happens, though. Everybody's probably got those stories for sure. Many of our animals hit the send button when we're not ready after writing an email. So um, let me see if there are any last questions. I know we're a little bit over the hour, but this has been really great. Yeah, Gail, always inspiring. Thank you. I, I feel the same from everyone here. And thanks so much for being here tonight, everyone. Does anyone have any last thoughts that they forgot to share questions? Um, everyone excited for the upcoming year? Yeah, Erin. Well, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. You kind of inspired me. I've had my leaf pack kit for a couple of years and then COVID kind of did slow me down. And I'm with the conservation district, Laura. So I was really interested to hear from you. We actually have a learning center, a land use learning center, nature center with a created stream. And so I'm trying to figure out how to use the kit on that stream and, and share it with the public. And I'm thinking it's gonna be, have to be more than a one day, a one day class. But um, I was interested, I don't know why I never even thought of multiple leaf packs. So you all use a different pack for each different group of students. Duh, that, you know, so yeah, you, you've all been great. Thank you so much. Well, that's where the, yeah, this wisdom and the sharing comes from and have benefits of all this. And you can absolutely, you know, reuse that leaf pack for say a class in the morning. You can put it back in the creek water as long as you keep it cool and sometimes put it like a bubbler on there so it's oxygenated. The next class can use them. I mean, they do get beat up over time. Um, and it's good not to keep them for more than a day, more than a day, really. So, yeah, yeah, I was worried about like restuffing them. Um, yeah, also, do Laura, so do you like check check kits out to your your teachers within your district or I I took a leaf pack kit probably eight years ago and I think I got the free kit, but there's so much stuff in it, I can keep reusing it but I heard you can use, is it the onion bags or something? The, cause you come with Petri dishes, which you can just keep using over and over again. It's just the bags that you have to purchase. So you can get them from the grocery store, I think. So He's no, I just- reason. Yeah, you know what? We ordered ours on Amazon and you can order 500 of them for like 10 bucks. Wow. What are they yeah. called? What are they? I think they're called vegetable bags. But Plastic. yeah, I thought like onion bags or something. Yeah. We're for freshwater mussels and oyster bags too. So you just want to make sure the mesh size is not too tiny that a macroinvertebrate can't get through. And I, I think on our resources page for leaf pack, I put a link where you can buy them more in bulk, but I can always send you a link too. But yeah, that's a great idea. Buy them in bulk. Leaf pack now, or Lamont sells them, I think for 30 as well, but they sell them with the, the tags too, like the bag ID tags, which you may not always need. So, well, great, Erin. I'm glad you're inspired. Dust off that leaf pack kit one more, one more time. So I know it's hard to sometimes get motivated out there, but yeah, that's what this whole night was about was to trying to just to share. Um, but I, you know, the big, idea here was to partner up with people and that will be your power to, um, you need, need that support. So, and we're here. If you have our questions, just reach out to me um, at the Leaf Pack Network and happy to, to chat with you about some ideas. So thank you so much for being here tonight. I will post this on YouTube. So it'll come out sometime in the next few days. Check our Leaf Pack, State, um, Leaf Pack YouTube and we'll send out our next e-news probably at the end of this year. And thank you again. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you to all of our guest speakers. Really, really inspiring. And definitely can see it in, in the chat. That's awesome. So thanks for taking the time to do this and for keeping on with Leaf Pack during some really challenging times that we're in. So um, very, very cool. All right, everyone. Have a great, great night. Be wild, be free. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>